Lesson 101, Percent Markups, very definitely real world applications of the math that we are doing. If you own a store, you need to buy the things that you're going to sell. If you turn right around and sell them for exactly the same, you haven't made a profit. You need to charge your customers and have them pay more than you did so that the extra covers the cost of renting your store space, it covers the cost of paying your employees, it covers enough for you to be able to have some profit for yourself. So when we are doing these problems, we like to think about it from the perspective of the store owner. We are going to use a P for whatever the store owner pays to purchase it plus M for the markup, that increase, that extra amount. So P plus M will equal S, our selling price. It is from the perspective of the store owner when we set up these problems. Some synonyms you need to make sure that you understand. Sometimes they will say selling price. Sometimes they will say retail price. Wholesale means purchase price. What does the store owner have to pay for it? Sometimes they'll just say the cost for that store owner. There are, generally speaking, going to be two ways that will work for you to set up these problems. We can do it either with an equation or we can do it with a ratio table. If we do it with our equation, P plus M, equals S, then on this example, the selling price for the sweater was 84, so we can put that in for the S. The markup was 20%, and it's always important, of what? Of means times the purchase price. So that means the markup is 20% times the purchase. So the markup is 20% times the purchase price and purchase price will stay the same. So if we have 1P plus 0.2P, we have 1.2P is 84. We then divide both sides by 1.2, and we can have that our purchase price is $70. Must remember to label, and the dollar sign goes on the left. It does not go after the number. So that would be one way that we could find what was the purchase price, and then we have answered this first part of the problem. Before I answer the second part about markup, I'm going to model a second way that we could have set it up to find the purchase price. We could do our ratio table, P plus M equals S, and then we're going to have a column for our percent. When it says of the purchase price, that tells us purchase price gets to be the 100. And then the markup is going to be 20, and our formula is P plus M equals S. So the selling price is 120% of the original purchase price. And that makes sense. 120% is more than all of it. The selling price is more than all of the purchase price. Then we can have our actuals over here. And so if they tell us that the actual selling price was 84, we put that down here. And then we want to find the purchase price. So we can put some letter in here for the actual purchase price. I can do an X. I think I'll stick with P for this problem just so it matches what I already did. Now I have two rows that are filled in. I have 100 over 120 and a P over 84. So I can think of those as two ratios that are equal. And I do my cross products. 120 P for one diagonal equals 84 times 100 for the other diagonal. Do not write down that 84 times 100 is 8,400. Instead say, oh, the other thing I need to do to get P by itself is divide by 120. And this is how you are going to control divide and drive to see that that was not mine. Put the 84 times the 100 in the numerator, down arrow, put 120 in the denominator. And when you 
you do that, you will once again have 70, so the $70 for the purchase price. Easiest way then to get the actual markup, now that we know P is 70, and we know P plus M is the selling price. Either way, we can put 70 in for P. We know that the selling price is 84, and then we solve this, and we get that the markup is 14, and again, dollars with the dollar sign on the left. Next one, sedan retail. Now, what did I say? I said retail was a synonym for selling price. And we want to know the purchase price. So we're going to do our little table here, P plus M, to get our selling price. And it is marked up 25%. So the markup is 25% of what? because the of needs to be the 100% of the purchase price. So we put 100 on the purchase, just like we did before. So the selling percent is now 125% of the purchase price. Retail was the actual selling price, so 16295 And we want to know the actual purchase price, so we'll put a variable in there. We don't really need this middle row now. It was just kind of a placeholder to figure um, the 125 out. One diagonal is 125x. The other diagonal is 100 times 16,295. We want just x. We're not going to enter the 100 times 16,295 equals because we will need to divide that by 125. Here's what we enter on the calculator, written down exactly the way we can enter it. And when we do that, we get that our purchase price is $13,036. Be sure you get the dollar sign and the comma. When it has more than four places, you must have a comma. And the dollar sign must be on the left. And since I didn't call that P, I'm going to label that purchase price. Okay, next one's going to be a little bit tricky. Okay, purchase price is 1,400. It is still always true that P plus M equals S. They're telling us actual over here, actual purchase is 1,400. The markup is 30%. But here's what's tricky. This time it is of the selling, so the selling has to be 100. So purchase percent plus 30 is 100, means purchase percent had to be 70%. And then we want to know the actual selling price. So I pick a letter and put in there. Now I no longer need the middle row since it has something that is missing in there. And I have my ratio 70 over 100 is 1400 over X. One cross product, 70X equals 1400 times 100. Divide both sides by 70 so we can get just X. And when we do that division, we will end up with $2,000. And again, dollar sign on the left. And this was our selling price. So, so far, so good. One last kind of example that I want to talk through. This time we want to know what was the percentage for the markup. We haven't had to find some of those yet. So we know the cost, that's the purchase price, and we know the markup. So if purchase price plus markup is always selling price, 
we have 1,400 plus 700, we know the selling price is $2,100. Now we want to know the percentage for the markup out of the selling price and out of the cost. So we want to know what is the percent, not just the fraction, for markup over selling. And we want to know what is the percent of the markup out of the cost. So we can take that fraction, which in this case we know is 700 over 2,100, which we know is one third, but we want to know what percent is that. We want to know how much that is out of 100 when we are trying to do this. So what we can do with that is choose, we can do this a couple of ways. This one is very easy. We know it's one third and we know one third is 33 and a third percent. So we could simply do it that way. If we really wanted to do it, put a Y in there, this way, we could say 2,100 times Y equals 700 times 100. And then we could divide all of that by 2,100 because percents are always out of 100. And then if we solve that, we would get 33 and one third, and then we would label that percent. Since we're doing two in this problem, we need to label which one is which, that that is 33 and a third percent of the selling price. And then actually uh, the percent markup as a percentage of cost is going to be much easier because the markup is still 700 and the cost was 1,400. Oh, we can very easily look at that and say that is a fact. And so we know that it is We could also do 700 out of 1,400 is, and I'll use a different variable Z this time, how much out of 100 we could do our cross products and then divide both sides by 1400 and we would also get the 50% that way. I'm doing a little bit too much work on this one, but the numbers were quite so nice to look at. Oh, that half is 50%. I need to label that one that that is the percent of cost. And hopefully that wraps up uh, what you need to know about markups and you're ready to do that problem set.